Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. All right, you guys, welcome back to part two. Now in this section, we're going to be discussing Harry's arrival in Tokyo, the Netflix project, some more information has come out, and some more about Finn. Okay, so hold on, let's go. Articles are coming out saying that the three days that they're going to spend with Invictus Games, essentially, will tell us everything we need to know about Harry and Meghan's marriage. You know, we already know that you know, Harry is going to beam at all the sportsmen and women, and he's going to go, hi, guys, and, you know, he's going to wear specific colors, and, you know, he's going to do his whole, this is my Invictus thing, and then, but now, of course, we know that Megan uh, is being given a prominent role and is essentially taking over this whole thing, okay? Okay. We know that it was Harry who went to his father's coronation alone and then ran back, okay, very quickly back to Megan. I mean, you see these pictures above. He looks so happy at every occasion, right? So we'll know what's going on as we watch them as they navigate the Invictus Games. Are they going to do the same lovey-dovey, sweetie, huggy, holding hands thing? Or are they going to be more professional? We'll have to wait and see. How, how it goes. Now, moving on to our next big story for today, the Worldwide Privacy Tour has started for Harry. Heading off to Japan without Meghan Markle. And of course, people are talking, Friar Tuck, because, you know, he's there again, we've spoken about this, talking about philanthropy, but he's actually damaged a lot of the global charities. I completely agree. You can literally, though, almost see the plugs in the back of his head. You guys see that? Because I do. And according to Megan's mole, he flew over with Nacho on yet another private jet. I'm so sick of this man talking about the climate. You know, with him flying around like they're Ubers. Anyway, he showed up. Here he had a chance as part of the rebranding to really change his image. So what does he do? He's wearing the Archwell baseball cap. He's wearing the same darn necklace. He looks exactly the same, stuck in time, never moving forward. You guys know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So he gets off the plane that there wasn't, I mean, there was some security there, some people waiting for him, but nothing like I think he thought. Anyway, watch this. Harry gets off the plane and except for one person here and there who yells out Harry because they happen to recognize him. Look, that's not a red carpet rollout with all, in the middle of these throngs of people. And quite frankly, he looks miserable, which is shocking even though he's next to Nacho. You know, except for somebody that yells out, Harry, what do you think about being here? Except for that, he, he doesn't look any happier. So Harry um, is walking next to Nacho. Nacho literally looks like he's part of security. <laughs> I mean, he's at some airport called uh, Hanida, I think is, is how it says. And guess what he's wearing, guys? A black shirt. Just, you know, oh my God. So anyway, I agree with Genevieve. I, I really don't understand the point of him being there. He really doesn't know anything about philanthropy. Now, of course, Omid Scobie wrote, Oh, lots of fans waiting for Harry and arrivals. Because the royal family has always had a big following in Japan, especially Princess Diana. Um, if there were a lot of fans waiting in arrivals, we would have seen photos of those fans waiting in arrivals. Uh-huh. Now, there's supposed to be a panel discussion. On it is a New Zealand rugby player. Um, there's supposed to be a Centibali chairwoman, a Royal Australian Naval veteran, an Invictus gold medalist. Uh, you know, it's it's just there to try to raise money. And then he's going on to the annual polo club to do the, um, you know, the uh, game for Centibali. Moving on to our next story. Here we go. The world's biggest navel gazers have finally hooked a buzzy new project. This is how the article starts out. 
Apparently, they're claiming that Harry and Meghan have acquired the film rights to Meet Me at the Lake, which was a New York Times bestselling novel by Carly Fortune that apparently cost $3 million, and it's being developed for Netflix. Okay, this is, this is what's going on. But we all knew that this is, is probably not going to go well. And, and let me tell you why, because this is just more proof that they can't rebrand and they can't be something different. They chose a novel which basically mirrors their lives and which was obviously based on them, which is another sign of their self-centered and boring devotion to themselves that keeps them on top of the throne of victimhood, right? So yes, they paid $3 million for this deal, but it, they're saying that they overpaid and since they've never produced anything of consequence, it's a waste of time. Penguin Random House, who we know did spare, also put out this book. So it's being reported that he probably helped, they probably helped broker the deal, okay? That, that they probably had their hand in it. But let's be honest, this woman based this book on Harry and Meghan. I mean, are you kidding? Well, in a way it was, because as it turns out, Netflix is the one who paid for the rights to the book. Now, why would Netflix go out of their way to pay for that after they've already paid Harry and Meghan so much money and Harry and Meghan haven't been able to come up with any content? Why would they do that? Well, there's a lot of theories going around as to why Netflix would have done it. I agree with the Royal News Network because if Harry and Meghan give them trouble and they can't get anything accomplished, Netflix could pull the plug and they still own the rights to the book. It's not under Archwell's, you know, it's not Archwell's. Instead, Netflix has it. So Netflix could say bye-bye to them and still keep the, the book. I get it. I get it. Now, since they crossed the picket line, essentially, to help Netflix get something, uh, nobody's going to want to work with them, number one. Number two, they're restructuring. Harry and Meghan are restructuring again because Ben Browning, you know, who was head of the internal content at Archwell, uh, he left. They have also parted ways with their uh, senior vice president of scripted television, Nishika Kumble. She lasted less than two years. I mean, their their staff is having multiple, we've covered this already. Their staff has multiple titles. Things are not going well. They've tried to attach themselves to A-listers. The A-listers are speaking out. It ain't working. Now, I think it's important for you guys to know a blind item came out that said that Netflix had to purchase the rights to the book because Harry and Meghan are essentially broke. Supposedly, they gave up half of their future earnings from Netflix in exchange for them having to buy the rights. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. All right, here we go. Finn again, because there was yet another storm. It's so weird. Okay, just watch this, you guys. Now it's coming again. It seems like every day here it's over 90, 95 degrees. And then in the afternoon, we have one of these horrible storms. Like they're really bad. I mean, look at that. It's coming. Even the birds. I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder. Even the birds that were, I mean, all day long, I need to clean that bird bath. All day long have disappeared. Can you guys hear that thunder? It's crazy. Blue sky over there. Big storm coming over here. Everybody inside, please. Ooh. Let's go see where Finn is. I bet he's hiding again. Wow. I mean, these videos just don't really show how hard the rain is coming down or how thick it is. I mean, it's just insane. Do you feel better like that, all wrapped up? No, he's still shaking. He's a shaking. Oh, buddy. And uh, it, he just doesn't like the storms, guys. And every, almost every afternoon, there's really, really bad, horrible thunderstorms. Like, I don't know what's happening. And just so you guys are aware, my husband and I did go ahead and reset up his crate in our bedroom and we put a cover over it so he has like some place to go if he wants. It's there, he's just not going. Hmm. 
All right, you guys, so that's the end of video number two, and today we only have two videos. So don't forget to leave those comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you've already hit the button, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to go into the description box. You'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and a physical address. If you've donated to my coffee fund or through the thanks button, thanks so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.